the Creator and the Christ and the Spirit so it was from the start, so it shall be forever, one God, always here. Glory to the Creator, and the Christ and the Spirit, so near. As it was from the start, so it shall be forever, one The spiritual part of ourselves is a divine abyss. It is a dimension that is not touched by words, thoughts, ideas, and feelings. Our bodies were made for perceiving the beauty of the world, a flower, a kiss, a stunning and vibrant green hillside, or a newborn baby. And yet all the art in the world cannot capture exactly what it feels like to experience the divine nature of these things. The path of unknowing is to both savor what the senses can take in, but also wonder at the mystery of unfathomable depths of even a single atom.
pray with me? Divine goodness, Holy One, pause us for this moment, bear us up in this time, hold us for eternity. We embrace the brokenness of our lives. We believe you are creating new light that will shine through. We open to all your possibilities. And all the people say, Amen. We're finding out that we don't have to look too far away to see beauty around us. Yet, if we do look far, far away, we can see even more beauty. Have you ever gone outside at night, on a clear night, and looked up into the sky? What do you see? You see stars, don't you? Yeah. Now we can't see the stars from this window, but I put a picture up of the other night when we were out lighting firecrackers, fireworks outside, and we could see the moon and it was so pretty through the trees. There is a telescope called the Hubble Telescope that was launched, oh, I don't know, 30 years ago or so. That telescope has been able to show us 
the stars and the planets and the galaxies that are way, way out there. And we get to see up closer how beautiful they are. Stars are amazing. But they're so far away that without something like the Hubble telescope, we can't see them. But even then, there are times you look up in the sky and there's so many stars out and you just go, wow. You want to know how to say wow in another language? Do you? Okay. This is sign language. Mm -hmm. There's Another way, I think it is this way. <laughs> There's a lot of ways to say wow. It's kind of fun, isn't it? Yeah. So here's the thing. I'm thinking that if it's okay with your mom and dad, you can make some stars and put them up in your bedroom. My kids used to do that. And then at night, when you say your prayers, you can look up at the stars and make the sign for wow. And if you find that they are really beautiful during the day, you can make that sign as well, right? Every time you say, We're offering a little prayer to God because God created all that and we're saying God we really love what you did for us you want to say a little prayer with me okay. God of goodness thank you for amazing things Thank you for wonder. Help me praise you with my for the beauty of the earth. Amen. Bye. See you next week. Names were important in the ancient Near East. Names described attributes of, an, of a person or event, um, and they could be changed with the importance of the story or the person, such as Abram became Abraham. In the Psalms, the psalmist often gives glory to the name of God, and yet to name God that's kind of difficult because there's no one word that describes in full holy. In today's Lectio Divina, the psalmist describes the attributes for God which give praise. So those for which praise is given, justice and compassion. This is unlike any other unfeeling, life-denying idol that claims to be God. This is the Holy Spirit that moves and breathes, not only in the setting of beauty, the beauty of creation and motion, but even now. It is an indescribable presence that warrants the simple description, beautiful name. Alleluia, praise the name of Yahweh. Sing praise, you who serve the Most High, who stand in the house of Yahweh, in the courts of God's house. Alleluia, God is good. 
Sing praises to God's name because it is beautiful. Yahweh, your name stands forever. Your fame is told from one generation to the next. For you do justice for your people and you have compassion for your faithful. The idols of the nations are silver and gold, the work of human hands. They have mouths, but they can't speak. They have eyes, but they can't see. They have ears, but they can't hear. There is never a breath on their lips. Their makers will come to be like them, and so will all who trust them. House of Israel, bless Yahweh. Priests of the temple, bless Yahweh. Attendants of the sanctuary, bless Yahweh. You who revere Yahweh, bless Yahweh. Blessings from Zion upon Yahweh, who dwells in Jerusalem. Alleluia. I know, I'm supposed to be on vacation right now. But I wanted to give you just a few words for um, this coming week to, to think about. And really they're just notes from um, Professor Allie Etley on this scripture. And this is what she says. Between words of praise and attributions, the psalmist writes a few jarring sentences about idolatry. The writer warns us that when we make idols or when we put our trust in idols, we risk becoming like them. Idols have eyes but cannot see, ears but cannot hear. Idols can't breathe. This is part of the message that needs to be handled with care. Too many times these metaphors are preached in ways that harm people with disabilities. But in a series on beauty and a week titled Abyss, Mystery, and Wonder, we can't avoid talking about all the senses together. One of the ways we know God is through the senses, through our experience of God. Perhaps even our experiences can be idolatrous. Can you think of conflict originating in two people with radically different experiences on the same thing or event. Anytime, anytime we take time, take some thing or idea and make it solid and immovable, we create an idol. I'm kind of thinking that that really talks to us right now especially with um, all the events that are going on and we see all these man-made idols being toppled over and that's what they are. Yeah, they've had some importance to us, but we need to remember that it was an idol we created when we put up that statue and we are told not to put up any idols before God. Humans, she continues, are so adept at this, we can make something as malleable and fleeting as a feeling or experience and turn it into something to hold on to. The contemplative life invites us into a different kind of engagement with God and creation. In the words of Dr. Farley, God is not something to be seen or heard or grasped by reason. We manufacture images of God all the time. We become very attentive to our images. But divine reality creates in us such a way that we can move outside seeing, hearing, reasoning, and feeling. Those are good things to think about in this time.
May we remove our idols so that we can see and feel and hear and love the beauty that God has created in all of us and all around us. God bless you in this coming week. Usually our prayers in this series invite us to an open-eyed experience of looking around. There is also the experience of looking around inside the mysterious depths of our own imaginations, our own memories. And so today, I invite you to close your eyes, simply allowing whatever image comes to you as you hear the music. Whatever comes to you, let this movie in your mind be a part of your praying, not questioning or analyzing it too much. Just let it be. Looking, whether outward or inward, is a noticing of the depths of the beauty of life. And the creator of that beauty is present now and always. Let us pray. When you're tired and feel you can't get through, uncertainty comes over you. Just look around. 
When your problems seem too much to bear Unsure if there's someone who cares Just look around Whether stranger, neighbor, family, or friend On each other in tough times we can depend Look around, kindness, love is ours to share We can see it everywhere Though it might seem like forever Look around darkest night things are gonna be all right we'll get through this together just look around as we continue to listen to the song with our eyes closed, let us now think of others and pray for others in whatever way we feel they need to have us pray for them. Sometimes it can be hard to see Life is full of possibilities So look around Each new day is such a gift Embrace it and the life you live And look around Outstretched arms and many helping hands Don't give up on all your dreams and all your plans Look around, kindness, love is ours there. We can see it everywhere Though it might seem like forever Look around, for even in our darkest night Things are gonna be alright We'll get through this together Just look around song says, with outstretched arms and open hands, we will get through this together. In this time especially, it is very important for us to keep our arms and our hands open and outstretched and ready to help others. Um, so regardless of what you see in this world, the alarming things that you might feel are happening in this world, the compassion we see blossoming, that's a gift. Let us give to encourage that in others. Let us give God thanks for our gifts. Loving God, we thank you for all that you have given us. May we use these gifts for your glory to all people. In your son's name we pray, amen. We continue to integrate contemplative practices into our daily lives as a way of opening to the divine um, in deeper ways and training our spirits um, in compassion in all things. This week's ritual action is a practice of curiosity. Set a reminder to spend some time exploring phenomenon that you don't let, that you, a phenomenon, sorry, that you don't know anything about. Um, it might be further exploration of the Hubble 
and what it has taught us about this amazing universe that we live in. Or it could be something about the behavior of an animal species. One of my granddaughters was just telling me she doesn't know enough about elephants. So we're going to explore elephants. Whatever you choose, as you do so, allow your mind to take in the wonder and contemplate that information slowly and open your heart to what it leads you to. You might even want to put a note nearby that says the more we know, the more we know we don't know. Pretty true, right? The more we know, the more we know we don't know. Wonder and awe that leads to the care of creation is good. It's good for the beauty of the earth. Let us now add our singing to the song of creation that is already in progress.
The world is so varied and beautiful. Seek wisdom wherever it is to be found, and may the goodness of the Creator, the companionship of the Christ, and the insight of the Spirit infuse your life.